special guest, a no-show, but the party goes on. Hi, I'm Debbie. PM promises new parliament building and a revamped national stadium at Jamaica 60 launch. Visiting Rwandan President Paul Kagame, too tired to attend the Morgan Heritage headlined gathering. Big things promised as Jamaica marks 60 years of independence. Politicians eager to put a spin on their achievements whilst overlooking the failures. So I'm Following its no new taxes for five years in a row budget presentation in March, the Andrew Holness administration in celebratory mode. The PM at his Jamaica House lawn party rolling out feel-good big spending projects on the horizon to sync with Jamaica 60 celebrations. <laughs> No Paul Kagame to lend presidential prestige to the evening. The Rwandan strongman who brooks no opposition at home said to be resting. His finance minister deputizing. The program short and snappy. The PM's speech positive and punchy. Reggae Rasta tourism and sports proof of brand Jamaica's worldwide appeal. Missteps made, storms weathered. But Jamaica on course in its journey. Stable, democratic, free to disagree. And COVID managed without incurring a debt crisis. And of course, treats in store. New National Stadium, a Usain Bolt Sports Medicine Centre, and something for the boys and girls, a new parliament building, which apparently is urgently needed to showcase national pride. Yes, the parliament is on track. Is that our priority, really? It is a priority. Uh, I would quickly say to those who would want to say it is not a priority, the ability of our politics to function properly, to have the meetings for oversight, which we all complain about, to have the, the facilities to properly capture and record our debates, for example, to save those for posterity, to ensure that our members can conduct themselves appropriately. You know, and then of course we must think of our national pride when we invite people to come to our parliament. The parliament must represent the dreams and aspirations. When you look at it, you must say, ah, this is Jamaica. But year in, year out, high levels of crime and violence, also increasingly the story of Jamaica. Little mention of that amidst the hoopla around Jamaica 60. Isn't it about time that both sides acknowledge that crime is an intractable problem and they both played a role in that with the creation of garrisons and dons? Can't the politicians come clean about that and isn't that something they should do for the Jamaican people? At the present moment, whilst you can agree that our history in the undeclared civil war would have spawned the level of violence and organization around violence. Currently, you wouldn't be able to say that the gangs are politically driven. So we do have a genuine crime problem and we have to treat it as such. There is no political favoritism for criminals. I don't think that's in the PNP and definitely that's not in the Jamaica Labour Party. That I have made sure to stamp that out. But it, it would help with our violence problem if we confronted this history of the 70s and 80s where violence was a part of politics. As we move forward, we, we have to agree that crime and violence is a major problem. I don't think it's intractable. I think there are solutions. But you hit the nail on the head. I, I think that the, the PNP and the Jamaica Labour Party we need to come to an understanding about acknowledging that the problem is an emergency and uh, be able to use the emergency powers that exist. Andrew Holness's image taking something of a hit during COVID. Got a bit grumpy, seen as a tad overbearing, but he's lightened up. There's also perhaps something that reflects a collective sigh of relief as the pandemic continues to show signs of dampening down. As for the PM's party, Miss World for two years, Tony Ann Singh didn't hold back. Oh, 
Ashe and the NDTC made the most of their time on stage. And Morgan Heritage, who recently buried their dad and family patriarch, Denroy Morgan, harmonized seamlessly over tracks. Would have been ideal as a live set, but either way, a class act. Referendum on the Queen in the offing. The PM not saying when exactly, but is he sure of the outcome? Jamaica looking to a Republican future. Both the PNP and the GLP agree on that. But you know, suppose the Jamaican electorate at a referendum as a kind of protest against the track record of the two political parties were to vote against changing over to a republic. You know, it's a very interesting prospect and sometimes when you listen to the commentary that element may not be taken into consideration but rest assured your prime minister thinks about all these things which is why we are proceeding very carefully making sure that we go step by step because uh, along with ensuring that we do it we perfect the legal and constitutional issues involved there has to be a great deal of public education there is a level of conversation that is up here, very intellectual, very aspirational. But there also is a level of conversation with the average person that's very practical and would be wondering, what would a change mean for me? And the two has to be brought into sync. And that means that there has to be a process of public education. So as we go through the celebration of Jamaica 60, there has to be an engagement with the public as to what it means to become a republic, what will the changes mean both in symbols and in substance. <laughs>